On Thursday, June 13th, Liberated People, an apparel and accessories company, launched by the critically acclaimed Nigerian actor and philanthropist Bango Akinabe, held a pop-up event featuring eco-friendly shopping and cocktails, courtesy of Stoli and Vita Coco, at the new jewel of Brooklyn, Shirley and Alice, a vintage boutique. The event was well attended and it featured the spring 2013 collection of t-shirts with the dates of liberation of various countries around the world. Hi, this is Fatima from Sahara TV. I am here today with the actor Banga Akinabe and I know you've probably heard of him or seen him in The Taking of Pelham and um, The Wire and such, and um, today he's having an event here in Brooklyn. Please tell us, what is the event about today? Um, it's our first, I have an apparel line called Liberated People, and this is our first Brooklyn event. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It's a, it's a company with a socially conscious core. We work with different nonprofits around the world, the first one being with Beat the Streets out of Baltimore, which is a wrestling and tutoring program for inner city youth, and we donate a portion of profits to these different nonprofits. Um, yeah, it's a, it's the, the the line celebrates the liberation dates for different countries around the world, different nations around the world, uh, and we have I'm wearing right now the Ethiopia one. We have symbols on the shirts that are really the symbols, again, synonymous with those countries during the times of struggle. Uh, we hope to come up with other product offerings in the future, maybe hoodies, maybe products for children and so forth. But really liberated people, it's an apparel and accessories company, but it's more than that. It's about a movement, you know. Um, I try to liken liberated people to sort of other brands that have created little things like wristbands and how a lot of people have worn those wristbands and really, really united a group of people. So it's about empowering people, educating people, inspiring people, making people change agents, getting people to understand the independence that many countries had to sort of fight, you know, had to sort of go through or whatever and really celebrating freedom fighters. Your t-shirts are like statement pieces which you've said will create a movement. So please tell us a little bit about the vision on that. The vision of the line, because it's not just t-shirts, eventually will expand into other products. Um, the vision of the apparel line is to basically inspire people to get mobilized, to, to mobilize and demobilize populace. I, I believe firmly in this idea of being a global citizen and I wanted to create something especially after being on trial here in Brooklyn for protesting stop and frisk and being part of occupying Nigeria and, and being in sit-ins in Israel. Like I, I realized how how much we have in common, this struggle, this this fighting against against the, uh, uh, the oppression and it's and it's systemic and it's been going on for centuries and, and the, the faces change but it, it's the same fight like, like for the people so I wanted to make something that was uh, that that exemplified that fight that how beautiful it is how ugly it is and how we have that in common so it's not just people in America fighting it's people in America who are fighting for the same things that people in Nigeria are fighting about freedom it's also about people who in India and Brazil and everywhere else who are fighting about the same things basic necessities, access to healthcare, care, whatever it is, you know, and so Benga likes to use this phrase called, um, you know, one t-shirt on the backs of many. Imagine someone here wearing an India shirt, right, and someone in India wearing a similar shirt because it has the message of the day that they were liberated and this hand that signifies a symbol that is synonymous for them. Imagine those people wearing it and really, really feeling empowered about the fact that they, under, they not only understand they not only understand sort of the idea that you know there's a whole sort of liberation, they're celebrating freedom fighters who got them the liberation, yeah. but they also are wearing it to sort of symbolize that they're now empowered to actually sort of continue to be change agents about other things. Uh, we use Egyptian cotton um, and eco-friendly water-based printing. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we're in a few stores in Brooklyn and some in Harlem right now, and we sell online at weareliberated.com. I, I travel a lot, and, I, and, I, and I've seen a lot of different stories and groups of people who are constantly fighting for their rights. And I realized this is something that we have in common as people around the world, as brothers and sisters around the world. And I wanted to make something, a brand, uh, an apparel line that kind of that that celebrated that. Uh, 
Okay, so is this just your brand or do you have partners? I wish I had partners, girl. This is exhausting. Nah, it's all me. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you create this whole thing. You created this by yourself and... I did. I um, found I, I found a really good designer who got the message, who got you know, who got what I wanted, and and pulled together some friends to bring out the bring the word out, um, and he, research printing processes, research uh, t-shirts and fabrics, and I know a lot more about uh, clothes now than I did a year ago. So how did you choose the the location? Um, this is great. This is this is my friend's store, Kalila. Um, uh, Shirley and Alice is the name of the store here in Bedside, Brooklyn. It's uh, 434 Marcus Garvey. This is a wonderful vintage shop, communal, community based, um, and it's all my people who are who, are, who live here who, who are interested in keeping their roots here and making this a better community. So I, it just made sense. I, my my, they carry my line um, as well as some other cool lines and a lot of cool vintage um, clothes. So it made sense this, this being one of the stores in Brooklyn that that I thought we should be in. The message is pretty much, you know, the fact that every time every every time you go to different parts of the world you know there's a bit of instability what for whatever reason it is people are fighting about something but a lot of times the fighting is about things that are similar in all, many parts of the world the things that people are fighting about here the same thing that, the same thing that people are fighting about in Nigeria in India in all parts of the world sometimes it's about having access to basic necessities other times it's about freedom right you know, it's about little things and so liberated people is about creating a platform creating a product that people from here people from other parts of the world can wear them and really feel connected and really 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 start to get the message out that listen we're all fighting you know we're all sort of fighting about the same things that we need to sort of educate in order for us to win the fight we need to educate ourselves we need to know where we've come from we need to also understand that the only way that we can win is about knowing sort of what we're fighting about as as a war as a global as a global society it's one of the richest nations in, in the world and the richest on on the continent of africa yet 90 percent of nigerians live on two dollars and less a day it makes no sense especially in, it's not just rich in oil it's got many other resources so after the fuel subsidies were lifted and the people were being forced to pay more for what was already a, a natural resource to that land like we, we we took to the streets i was out in the streets every day protesting the, the, how ridiculous this was and how, how offensive and how criminal this was and and i, I was inspired by the, the fact that so many nigerians came out the numbers doubled every day. People were concerned that there would be a crackdown like there had been in the past in Nigeria when people spoke out. But it wasn't like that this time, in, particularly in Lagos. So it was, it was an amazing, it was a beautiful time to be in, in, in Nigeria. People were singing, people were dancing, people were, were out there you know, speaking truth to power. And it, I was very blessed to be a part of that. And so I, I was even more so inspired to, to get this line out there and, and and to, and to speak about the things I've seen and the things I believe in. So I hear that you're the designer of the beautiful clothes here tonight. Right, right. One of I the am. designers at least. So please tell me about your line. How did it come about? Well, my line is called uh, Lori, and uh, it started off around uh, 2007. You know, um, I first released it in Brooklyn, so it's always it's good that I'm back in Brooklyn again in a store in Brooklyn. Uh, it, was, it was sold in the Hamptons for a little bit, but now we're back in Brooklyn with it as well. So um, it started, I mean, everything is produced in Nigeria. It's a uh, melting pot of different cultures, uh, Victorian era, uh, West African fabrics, the Caribbean uh, style. So it's just a melting pot of different cultures and different styles. It allows that diversity of this new type of, you know, African um, inspirations that's been coming out of what we already do, but people are just, people in the West now are just finding out about it. My personal ethics affect my career because th that's how I choose the roles. That's how I choose the roles I take and the roles I don't take. Well, that, there's three, there's like different criteria. One, like whether the role will, it, this is doing something, saying something, adding to, adding to the, to adding, whether it's adding or not. Um, whether it's, it'll, 
how my career and whether it'll pay my rent. So I, I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, so I, I think about all those things. A role doesn't have to do all those things, but it needs to do most of them. Yeah. So what was your inspiration? It's not really inspiration at all. I mean, to say um, uh, it's, it's an inspiration is just ideas. I mean, the way things come about, some things are inspired by other things, and then sometimes it's ideas, you know, just an idea of, that comes in place into mind. But, you know, I, I grew up seeing, you know, women around me. The women I grew up with, my mother, my aunts, you know, they always had this distinct, you know, exclusive type of way of elegancy that, you know, I wanted to kind of share with the world. And this is my interpretation of it. So, you know, to say maybe that's what inspired me, you know, maybe that's what, that's what started off this whole, the whole Allori uh, con concept. So what message are you trying to convey to people? Oh, that, to get mobilized. Because I, I, I want, I mean, in my, it would be great. It would be great if people saw this line and saw what we are trying to do in the world and decided to get involved in their communities, in, in their country, in other countries, because I don't believe in these, these barriers of, of nations. These are all, we're all brothers and sisters. I, like, in, in the very real sense of the word, you know, they, they, it's love. So I think the more, the more we can put out in the world to, to exemplify that, the more, the more that we can carry with us. You know, you understand? Because there are already so many other messages that tell us the opposite. So we need to fight back with love. And hopefully this line is, is, is in, in that vein. A portion of the profits from the t-shirt sale at the event was donated to a local nonprofit organization called Beat the Street to help them achieve their goal of improving the quality of life of youth in their community.